An absolute meme of a graphics card. So anonymous that if you found it inside a used computer, you'd be forgiven for simply scrapping it on site. So why is it here? Why give it a Department of Rendering episode? Well, let me put it to you this way. Remember the fire-breathing 6800GS from the last episode? The last gasp of fixed-function hardware from NVIDIA. Remember how much it struggled to run Crisis? This card, this slot filler, OEM looking, tiny heatsink, utterly forgettable, bark in basement, we have Terascale at home, pile of so-called GPU, is three times faster in Crisis at every tested resolution, and it fits in the same slot. This is the Radeon HD 3650 AGP. Let's dive in. It feels a little weird, and more than a little disappointing, that this card is the first Terrascale card we're looking at on the series. Terrascale is complicated, not just from an architecture perspective, but from a release standpoint as well. Officially, Terrascale shipped on time, in the summer of 2007, uh, alongside NVIDIA's 8000 series refresh. Yeah, uh, NVIDIA had launched G80 in the winter of 2006 to zero competition from AMD, which was strange because Terrascale had already existed for a year at that point. AMD had been shipping Terrascale hardware in volume since November 2005, as Terrascale made up the very heart of the Xenos GPU in the just-released Xbox 360. So why did it take 18 months for Terrascale to get from the console to the desktop? Well, <laughs> nobody really knows. AMD never officially acknowledged the lateness of Terrascale's desktop launch, so the best I have to go on are rumors from around the time period. These rumors paint a pretty bleak picture, however, with statements like the first dies could only communicate with the outside world over the debug interface, and uh, later revisions had fragments getting stuck in the pixel shaders, suggesting that Terrascale was indeed a difficult birth. I imagine having shipping silicon in a massively successful console also put some strain on AMD's supply of desktop parts, especially if those rumors are true and there were yield issues with the early chips. So basically, what we have here is a chip that should have shipped in summer 2006, which then slipped to summer 2007, and finally this refresh and die shrink version was released in the spring of 2008. See what I mean? It's complicated. It doesn't get any less complicated when plugging this card into your computer. The stickers on the exterior of the card indicate that this is a Radeon HD 3650, but when plugged into a computer and with the stock drivers installed, it identifies itself as a Radeon HD 2600 XT, which is that earlier summer 2007, also higher performance variant that I mentioned before. Now the fun part is that both of these cards use the RV630 die, and this card is a pretty good overclocker, so we can get back almost all of that missing performance. Speaking of performance, RV630 is a dedicated mid-range die for Terrascale 1, with 120 stream processors, 8 texture mapping units, and 4 render output pipelines. So we're looking at a chip that's almost exactly half of the Xbox 360's specifications, but since the 360 runs at 500MHz and this RV630 runs at around 800, we're roughly about three quarters of an Xbox 360 with just this little card here. Not too shabby. Regarding those clock speeds, uh, the stock 3650 runs at 725MHz on the core and 800MHz on its memory, and the 2600XT runs at 800MHz on its core, and 1100 megahertz on its memory. Quite a big difference. I took some time overclocking and tuning this card, and I found that it can clock comfortably past the 2600 XT's 800 megahertz stock speed on the core, but I can't quite get to the 1100 megahertz on its GDDR2 VRAM. Although, the peak speed I achieved of 1020 megahertz is pretty close, and quite a bit faster than the 3650's stock speed of 800 megahertz. With that in mind, 
I'll be testing this as both a 3650 and a 2600 XT to demonstrate the performance difference between the two. But before we get to the benchmarks, let's take a look at what you might be playing on your early Terrascale Radeon back in 2006, 2007, 2008. Serious Sam 2 is technically a light original Xbox title, having launched in October 2005. Still, Serious Engine 2 adds pixel shaders, higher resolution textures, and more geometry to the already performant Serious Engine. On the 2600 XT, 720p medium settings is buttery smooth and plays very nicely, at least in these early sections of the game. I'm more than a little embarrassed to say that as a Serious Sam fan, I never played Serious Sam 2 when it came out, um, but I'm going to rectify that with this card and play it on some vintage hardware. Serious Sam is the oldest game in the list, but not the only one that runs well, so let's move along to 2006. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, released in March 2006, was a shading-heavy title that stressed out current-gen GPUs at its launch. Running here at the 720p Ultra preset, the little Terrascale has no issue with the graphically intensive outdoor areas that really gave fixed function cards like the 6800 GS we looked at last episode a run for their money. Dungeons perform more or less the same, and I'm sure that's a side effect of this card having about 75% of the 6800 GS's raw pixel pushing horsepower. Still, overall, a much more enjoyable experience than on the 6800 GS. Next up is Just Cause, a Fall 2006 cross-gen release for Windows, Xbox, PS2, and Xbox 360. As with so many mid-2000s titles, Just Cause turns up the bloom here. However, at 720p high settings, the 2600 XT has no real issue handling everything the game can throw at it, and smoothly as well. Even in this late-game save file with lots of action on screen, the card keeps its cool and delivers speedy frames to the monitor. Nice. Fast forwarding a year and we have Sega Rally Revo, a slick looking racing game reboot of the classic Sega Saturn and arcade title. Floaty arcade physics aside and my inability to drive, uh, the game does run like a dream on the 2600 XT here at 720p medium settings. Finally, November 2007 saw the release of Unreal Tournament 3, the final official installment in the Unreal Tournament franchise. Rest in peace, Unreal Tournament 4. Anyway, it runs on Unreal Engine 3, and performs pretty nicely here on the 2600 XT at 720p high settings. Okay, the part you've all been waiting for. Benchmarks! As with the 6800GS, I'm testing the Radeon HD 3650 here using my fast AGP test bench. This system is built around an ASUS P5PE VM motherboard running the Intel 865G chipset. The CPU is the fastest available for the board, a Core 2 Extreme X6800 unfortunately running at its default clock speed of 2.93GHz, as the ASUS motherboard doesn't expose any overclocking controls, even with the Core 2 Extreme installed. This board supports DDR400 RAM and AGP-8X with sideband addressing and texture acceleration. Both are enabled. For the benchmarks, I'm running them at two different performance levels, first at the default settings for the card at 725MHz on the core and 800MHz on the GDDR2 VRAM. These results are labeled 3650. Then I re-ran them with the card's maximum stable overclock of 820MHz on the core and 1020MHz on the memory. These results will be labeled as 2600XT. Okay. Starting out first with Expendable, a DirectX 6 game from 1999 which stresses out a graphics card's fixed function texture and color pipelines. There's no pixel shading here, just textures and lights, and that's reflected in 3650's performance deficit versus the 6800GS. The Radeon only has four pixel output pipelines, and although they're running at twice the speed of the 6800s, that's still not as much raw pixel output power as the Curie card's 12 dedicated pipelines. This is the only benchmark that I didn't test at 3650 speeds, as it's mostly for academic purposes. Getting into the real benchmarks, up next is Unreal Tournament 2003. I'm using the benchmark tool built into the demo version of this game so you can replicate these results at home. 
The test I'm using is the flyby test at 1280 by 960, and as I expected in the 6800GS video, this is a bit more of a Rock TMU focused benchmark than I'd like. The RV630 struggles to keep up with the 12 pipe Curie GPU, however, the overclock does give us a lot of performance back, and as a 2600 XT, the 3650 still turns in nearly 320 FPS in the flyby. Running the four game tests from 3D Mark 3 shows that the only actual improvement we get over the 6800GS is in Mother Nature, which is the shading heavy benchmark, but wow, what an improvement. Nearly 50% uplift from 68FPS to 94. The rest of the tests fall in line with the Radeon's lower ROP and TMU output performance, even when overclocked to 2600 XT levels. And last, but certainly not least, probably the most surprising benchmark in the set. Crisis, a 2007 release targeting DirectX 10, appears to love TerraScale, even tiny TerraScale cards like this one. Every single tested resolution runs nearly three times as fast as the 6800GS, even 1680x1050, which I thought for sure would be pixel pipeline constrained, but no. As before, this is at medium quality preset on Windows XP, using the GOG version of the game, thank you agent, and using the automated benchmark tool for repeatability. This little throwaway card is faster at 1680x1050 than the 6800GS was at 800x600. Wow! So, what's the conclusion then? The 3650, 2600 Pro, 2600 XT, all these RV630 cards seem to be one of those cards that gets overlooked a lot when people are looking to build a fast AGP system. It's tempting to jump straight to the 7950 GT or the Radeon 3870 to get your fix for fastest AGP card, but, you know, fastest anything usually comes with a ridiculous premium. Also, with how CPU-limited old AGP platforms were, you're going to find yourself also needing to spend big bucks on other components like rare motherboards and high-clocked CPUs in order to extract all that additional performance anyway. But for under $80 on US eBay, the 3650 makes a pretty strong argument for a vintage Oblivion machine or for playing PC ports of Xbox 360 games at 720p. I hope this look back at an underrated GPU has changed your opinion on these diminutive discrete display drivers, and maybe even inspired you to dust off an old Pentium 4 or Athlon 64 in the closet and breathe some new life into it as a retro gaming machine. But no matter what, if you made it this far, thank you. I hope life is treating you well, I hope you remain kind to yourself and others, and of course, may the PC parts be ever in your favor. Have a great night.